Okay, as I said, I want to show you augmented reality. So let's let's look at a couple of examples. This is a company, a French company, Total Immersion, that is a leading company developing different applications of augmented reality with different purposes, mostly in e-commerce, no, in the area of e-commerce. Uh, one of the apps they developed, and I need to go back to my iPhone. One of the apps is uh, this one. I'm going to show you now. Uh, for, a, for a Belgian company called Atoll uh, Les Opticiens, and uh, it, this uses another feature of uh, augmented reality, or some of the augmented reality viewers, which is object recognition and object tracking. Uh, so this is going now to recognize my face. I will help it by using the, 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 the interface, this uh, oval in the interface that also uh, is trying to locate where my eyes are. And once I'm happy with the, the positioning of that, I hit OK. And now it's working on recognizing my face. And I should be able to try some of the glasses that they are selling. So let's see. I want to try those. And let's see if it works. It should. I have tried so many times, and it works always before. Let me try it again here. Okay, it should be wearing some 3D glasses. <laughs> yeah, and that should include a, a face tracking, meaning that when I turn and move my head around, you still see the, that I am wearing those glasses. I'm not sure if I have a, a, a slide showing a video of how it works with uh, someone else who was demonstrating this, but right now, for some reason, it's uh, not working. Uh, but I have more examples. So let's not be disappointed because I have some more examples to show you uh, about how this works. So oh, these are the three, these are, this is another app. This was available in, in Facebook for a while uh, before it was uh, taken down for some reason. And this allows you to try different uh, Tommy Hilf uh, Hilfiger uh, sunglasses. And uh, that's, that's what we were supposed to see uh, with the example I wanted to show you. So other uses of augmented reality. Total Immersion has been working with uh, different concepts. For instance, this is the app that I was trying to show you. <coughs> we should have been able to see this, and, uh, we didn't. Uh, and they have also developed another one, for instance, for uh, uh, glasses, uh, I mean for uh, watches. And uh, they have also come up with the idea of a virtual uh, fitting room, or a, a, an augmented reality fitting room. <laughs> that allows you to try uh, the catalog of a, a, a store uh, without actually trying the clothes. The problem with this is that since it's, it, the system is so complex that you need to go to the store, it's not available to use using <laughs> the camera. So you need to actually go to the store to go into the virtual uh, catalog. And uh, that defeats the purpose. Because supposedly this, uh, the purpose is to save you a trip to the store. But if you are in the store, part of the fun is trying the clothes. The real thing, you know, but but well, we we can see a lot of potential on these uses in e-commerce of augmented reality, you know. And, and the the main goal, obviously, is to increase online sales for items that people don't buy online because, uh, you know, you are never sure if uh, the, so, the the sunglasses are going to fit on you. You'd rather try the real thing. This is supposedly to encourage users. And it's also used with branding, um, with the brand as part of the branding strategy of the company. By advertising your products using augmented reality, you are distinguishing yourself for, from the competition. You are also uh, selling to high, the high-tech community that you are in tune with the latest technology, and all that is supposed to help you uh, with your branding strategy. So, uh, the, in the genre of augmented reality, uh, there is a new genre of augmented reality games that is. This is an example here. This is a Star Wars-based uh, augmented reality uh, game. Uh, the player is in the city of New York. And as you can see, the background for the game is the city itself, not the way it's being captured by the camera, the live video captured by, by the camera. And then on, over that uh, background, the, the game is superimposed in the form of these uh, star fighters from the Empire that are invading New York City. You are supposed to imagine that that invasion is actually uh, taking place and try to uh, shoot down the, the, the vessels no, of the empire and save the day. So this is an example. This is another one, also by Total Immersion. 
and uh, is it racing again you are uh, uh, driving a Volvo and in this case you need to move around and uh, run and stuff as part of the of the game that you are playing now this is a, a how a, the entertainment industry is using also this notion going back to more practical uses a, a BMW has been experimenting with this idea of uh, augmented reality glasses or goggles to enhance the, the perception of the technician, of the mechanic, while they are performing the service on your car or any repairs. No? And then, for instance, here you're supposed to wear these goggles and they will help you and we will instruct you about how you should proceed. It includes a, a recognition system that recognizes the kind of engine on which you are working and then you communicate with your glasses through voice commands and uh, the, the, the glasses will instruct you all the different steps you need to follow and will uh, simulate that for you so that you can uh, perform better your, your work as a, in, in this case as a mechanic. No? This is a very practical use and it's showing us something else about augmented reality which is that not only a more technology in the forms of a smartphones and so forth can be used as augmented reality lenses, but also um, a, probably the most promising field of research right now is on developing augmented reality glasses. I don't know if you have seen or have heard about the augmented reality glasses by um, Go uh, that Google is developing, not a prior glass. Uh, they are already being sold uh, uh, for $1,500, I believe, but only to a group of people. Uh, who are uh, get, get, having access to this prototype, no? so to try them out. And um, at some point, they, they expect this to they expect this to be mainstream, to go mainstream. And uh, some have called this the real iPhone because basically it integrates all the functions that you find in an iPhone, but in, in your glasses. And they uh, like in 2011, I believe they um, released this uh, promo video that shows you what they call a day with glass, no? And uh, this is a, a, a user using these glasses, and from the very moment that you put them on, when you wake up, you are fed with all this information from how is the weather like, uh, when you see it, uh, look to the sky, to your network, that you're gonna start interacting with your network immediately through voice commands in the same way that you interact with uh, uh, Siri, no, in the iPhone. <laughs> Uh, it gives you um, driving directions, I mean driving or walking uh, directions in this case, so that you can, you can plan your meetings with your friends. Um, let me show you, uh, you can, um, you can uh, in the same way that you use uh, Siri to remind you of the stuff you want to do later, you can use it in that way, talking with your glasses. I don't know how people are going to look when they start doing that. Uh, it will give you again a walking direction in any place where you are. You can share your location with other people so that they can find you. They can know exactly where you are. If they are wearing their glasses. They get there easily. And uh, you can pre-order food and when you get there you just pick it up. You have already paid. Of course it has a camera. Without a camera you don't have a, a, an exciting a mobile device. You know? So it has a camera, you can take pictures. And finally you can share your view. You can share your view at any time. And that's what they have been emphasizing. At the end, uh, the guy is uh, standing over the city and he's sharing the view with uh, his uh, girlfriend, her friend. No? So that's coming up soon. At the most <laughs> extreme end of augmented reality, we have something like what I'm going to show you, which is an application of augmented reality to uh, social networking. Uh, this is a, a prototype that this company, Tad Polar Rose, uh, released um, uh, in 2011, I believe. And it includes uh, the two options. One, to set up a profile of you, how you want people to access, the, to see your identity when they point their phone at you. And the other one is a recognizer that uh, works by recognizing the face of any people uh, you point the camera at and uh, 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 matching that face with the person they have in their database. So this uh, person right now is um, uh, setting up his profile, including all his, uh, his Skype information, his YouTube videos, etc. And then when a user uses the recognizer, uh, it will give you information that is available for that person. For instance, when you uh, point the camera at her, then you know 
that she's Mina Thompson. You get her phone number <laughs> and uh, uh, all the information that is uh, available. Uh, you can see the, the how this would be very controversial. It was already, in fact, when